Hello and welcome. My name is Angela Davis and I'm the Florin Quilter. And today we're going to talk about this lap quilt right here. This is a lap quilt that I'm making for my aunt and my mother requested it. Uh, to give you a little bit of background history, uh, my mother is the, is the mm, fourth youngest from a family of nine children. And my aunt is the oldest girl. So right now, due to my aunt's circumstances, she is currently in a wheelchair. And because of that, her low mobility, she, her legs get very cold. So my mother's asked me to make her a lap quilt. So that's what this video is all about. Uh, but first, let me show you some photos before we get into constructing this quilt. And stick to the end because I'm going to give you yardage requirements in case you want to make the double four patch and a larger throw size for uh, like the back of a couch or the back of an easy chair or a recliner. So here's a photo of my mother and her younger brother, my uncle. She was approximately five years old and my uncle was approximately four in this picture. Oh, she might have even been four and he might have been three by looking at the picture. I love these old photos. But the one day we were sitting around having coffee at my aunt's house and I had mentioned this photo and how I wanted to make a, a copy of it so that I could have a copy for myself. And I said, the picture is just so lovely. And she said, she started giggling and she said, you know who got them ready for that photo, don't you? And I said, grandma. And she goes, no, not grandma, me. She said, I, I'm being the oldest daughter. She said, I was responsible for taking care of the little ones. And she said, because Ma, my grandmother, only had time to do two things. And that was cook because everything had to be made from scratch and do laundry because laundry, even though they had a machine, it was nothing like the machines we have today. And it took all day to do laundry. So my aunt said that she was responsible for getting them bathed, getting their hair all combed nice, her bangs trimmed, and also ironing and pressing their clothes. And she said back then everything had to be starch. It homemade corn starch starch. And so um, I just love that story that my aunt, who was probably by this time about 15, took care of the younger ones. And because my aunt was 10 years old when my mother was born. And the story goes that my aunt, who I'm making this quilt for, uh, you know, my grandmother gave birth to her children at home. And I guess when the doctor was there and the baby was, you know, getting closer and closer, my aunt was responsible for running up and down the steps and getting the doctor whatever he needed. If he needed extra towels, if he needed extra sheets, if he needed extra hot water. My Aunt Phil was the one who was responsible for, you know, getting all those things for her, for the doctor. And after my mother was born, they didn't have a name picked out. Um, I guess it was very common in those days because of the high mortality rate of newborns to not name your baby until after they were born. So my grandfather, my grandmother didn't have a name picked out. So my aunt is the one who named my mother, Irma. So uh, aunt feels special. She's special. So when my mother asked, you know, can you make her this quilt? I said, absolutely. So with that being said, I chose uh, four colors and I'm going to show them to you now. How I did this was I chose a main print and I whenever I do this I call that the focus fabric and then what I do is I pull colors from the focus fabric that will complement the print so I pulled the green the pink to complement the pink flower and then the peach to complement the peach flower and my aunt's favorite one of my aunt's favorite colors is peach and that's the reason why I gravitated toward this print I chose the main fabric, this floral print first, and then I chose three other colors to complement this main fabric for this particular quilt.
So for this quilt, the finished measurement is 36 inches wide by 44 inches long. So it's eight blocks across by 10 blocks, blocks down and they, and the square itself is a finished four inch square. So for the focus fabric, you're gonna need, and this includes a little extra, two and a quarter yards. For the green, you're gonna need one and a quarter yard because the green is in the four patch, it's in the border and the binding. The pink, you're only gonna need about a quarter yard, but I would get a little more than a quarter yard, like maybe a third, just to be on the safe side. And the peach is in the four patch and also in the border. So you're gonna need a half yard and I would round that up to about three quarters. It's always nice to have a little extra. The backing fabric, I need a yard and a half and I got that from my print because I think I had almost four yards of my print when I started. Um, so there you have it. So almost four yards of the print. The green, let's go with one and a quarter yard. The pink, um, a third of a yard. And the peach, let's go with um, three quarters. Okay, so what you're going to do is we're going to cut from the print, okay? We're going to cut five strips at four and a half inches, and then we're gonna subcut those into four and a half inch squares, okay? And we need 14 of those. Okay, so for the green, we need five two and a half inch strips for the four patches. We need four two and a half inch strips for the border, and we need five two and a half strips for the binding. So we need a total of nine two and a half strips in the green. In the pink, we need three strips at two and a half inches, but we really only need two width of fabrics plus one at two and a half inches by 18 inches, but we can cut three just to be on the safe side. The peach, we need three strips at two and a half inches for the four patches, and then we need four strips cut at two and a half inches for the border, okay? Okay, so, like I said, from the print, we're cutting our strips and then we're subcutting into squares. And then we're gonna subcut those into four and a half inch squares and we're gonna set that aside. Once everything is cut, you're going to put your pairs together. So you're gonna put your green next to your pink and you're gonna sew those together into pairs. Then you're gonna sew your green next to your peach and put those into pairs. Now remember, you're sewing three sets of pairs, three sets of the pink for the four patch and three sets of the peach for the four patch. And then from there, you press and then you subcut those into two and a half inches like this to create your four patch, okay? To cut the strips, you're going to layer two on top of one another so, so that the seams nest. And then you're gonna cut the strips in two and a half inch sections.
And then from there, it's just a matter of placing them on the wall and the rotation that you want. When sewing the rows together, you want to be sure that when you pick up your first row and set it down next to the machine, that you're setting it down so that the side of the stack of blocks that gets sewn is facing the machine. This way you don't mess up the orientation of how you're sewing those blocks together. you want to make sure to give your backing and your quilt top a really good pressing a really good final pressing before layering them together in the quilt sandwich I pin based my quilt layers together and I try to think about where I'm putting them on the quilt in relationship to how I think I want to quilt it so that I try to lay the pins out to avoid the lines where I'll be potentially putting my stitching. For the binding, I'm sewing four strips length to length and I've cut off the selvages. And I've pressed them flat and I'm gonna sew them across. Make sure every time you start to sew on your machine, you hold those threads to prevent any accidental knotting or bird's nests. And now I'm going to sew these two long pieces end to end to make a continuous binding. From here, we're going to press the entire length in half lengthwise. Okay, so for the binding, okay, let's pretend this is my quilt and I'm attaching my binding, okay? Now, my binding, I use cut two and a half inches because that's how I was taught to do it. Some people like a narrower uh, binding, they'll cut theirs at two inches. And some people like theirs a little bit larger. Some people cut theirs at two and three quarters or even three inches. I stick with the standard two and a half inches because that seems to work well for me. When I'm done pressing it all down, I turn it over and I press it again to make sure that that strip is nice and flat. And I don't have any issues with these seams being bulky. And I'm sewing a quarter inch. And let's say this is the raw edge of my quilt. When I get to within a quarter inch of my raw edge, okay, I stop and I do maybe two back stitches, okay? Then I pull the quilt out from the machine. And then what I do is I fold this up. Hold on. I fold this up like this. Okay. And I make sure that, that the raw edge of my binding and that raw edge of my quilt is all in line with one another and then I crease this with my finger and then I fold this down 
so that this raw edge again is in line with the raw edge of that turn where I start the next side, but this fold is in line with that raw edge, okay? And when you start sewing on this fold, you start at the very end. You don't start at a quarter inch in, you start at the very end and just continue all the way down. And that's how you make your turns. And then when you come to the middle where they meet, where they're meeting, you just find the spot where they meet, you fold them over and you finger crease like that. And then you open it up and you stitch right on that finger crease. And then you trim a quarter inch and that will lay nice and flat. Now, the other thing that I wanted to let you know is the binding here, I'm going to start in the middle. I'll pin this around like so. Okay, like that. And then I'll just do a blind stitch all the way around. And remember, you always start in the middle. You never start in a corner. Okay, you always start in the middle, you never start in the corner. Okay, and you, ow, ooch, ouchie, ouchie, that pinched. <laughs> but you always start in the middle of your quilt, never in a corner, okay? And when you do get to a corner, okay, fold it over. Okay, you tuck it in and then you fold it on this side. Make sure it covers those stitches like that. And then you put in another pin. See? And you just continue to fold. Makes a nice little mitered corner, see? Nice little mitered corner. Okay. Then you just continue on down the line with your blind stitch until you meet up where you start again. So to recap, the double four patch. Oh, and the reason why it's called a double four patch, let me show you. Do you see it? There it is, the double four patch. It's a four patch within a four patch, the double four patch. Now I'm gonna show you another example of how to do a four patch. And this one is not a double four patch. It's a straight four patch. And this one is a nice size throw. It's square, it's 60 inches by 60 inches. Let me hold it up for you. There it is. And what's nice about the big four patch is it lends itself well to those big, bold, beautiful prints that sometimes you're thinking, I bought it, but what am I going to do with it, you know? And they are beautiful, and they shouldn't just end up on the back of a quilt. And unfortunately, I think we do that a lot. You know, we look at those bold prints and we go, oh, what am I going to do with it? And then we stick it on the back of a quilt. A big four patch is a great way to use those bold prints. So let me give you the yardage requirements for this four patch. Okay. So the yardage requirements for this larger four patch um, is... For the print, you need two yards 
color number one and color number two, you're going to need one and a quarter yard of each. And then, of course, you'll need uh, backing fabric, which I, since this is 60 inches wide, uh, 40, 40, probably going to need about four yards of fabric for the backing. Um, and then, of course, binding. So you're probably going to need at least a half yard. Let's see, 16, 60 is 120, 120 is 240. Uh, I think you're gonna need at least a yard for the binding. And I'm just doing that off the top of my head. But for this straight four patch, the nice big bold print four patch, it's 60 inches square finished. It's five blocks across by five blocks down. The print, you're gonna need two yards. Each color, color number one and color number two, you're gonna need about one and a quarter yards. I would say you're gonna need four yards for the backing and then probably like an extra half yard for the binding. So there you have it, the four patch. Wonderful, wonderful uh, pattern to use beautiful prints with complementary colors and to use big bold prints with complimentary colors. And I just wanted to thank you so much for joining me. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my videos. And I know my aunt is just going to really, really enjoy this quilt because I enjoyed making it for her. And I enjoyed having, you know, her voice in my head while I was making it, you know. Her house was the house that when you went to visit, um, she always had snacks and treats and and she would get out her little parfait sunday glass dishes and she'd put ice cream in it and cool whip and then she'd have us pick out our own colors for the sprinkles i'll never forget that uh, so next time you have uh, prints in your stash and you're thinking why did i buy this i'm not sure what i'm going to do with it consider the four patch. Consider a small four patch for uh, smaller prints and consider big four patches for those, for those big bold prints. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, and if you have any fun stories to tell, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear them. And remember, you know, why sleep when you can sew? Um, keep on sewing. And let me give you a little sneak peek of uh, the next video. I don't know if it's going to be the next video I post or the one after that, but let me give you a little sneak peek.